Hey, what's up guys? This is Chris and I'm back with more Everyday RC. What is going on guys? Wow, things have been crazy lately. I'm just getting over being sick. I had the flu for a couple of days. Been working a lot of overtime at my job. Things have been hectic. But as you know, I'm always making it happen in the RC world. Just haven't had a chance to put up a video. And man, I've been watching so many videos lately. I'm so jealous of all you guys that have so much time to be able to play with the RCs, make videos constantly. I think it's great because it gives me inspiration. While I'm not able to make a video, I'm still able to work on them every day and it keeps me going guys so big props goes out to all you guys that just keep it flowing with the videos but I'm always still making it happen I got a lot of projects going on right now um, so I just wanted to show you guys everything that's been going on I'm sure a lot of you are curious what's been going on with my slash how things have been going so just give you a quick update on what's been going on in my RC world and uh, happy Super Bowl Sunday to all you football fans out there and uh, real quick, let me just show you what's happened. All right, guys. Alright guys, first things first, I'm going to start with the Slash on road because I know a lot of you are wondering how my progress is making on this build. So, before I go any further, big shout out goes to Jess34753. Okay, go check out his channel, that's his YouTube name, Jess34753. Most of you already know him, but he's become a very close friend of mine in the RC game and he's a really, really nice guy and he's doing huge things for the RC game as far as I'm concerned. He's a customizer, he's a builder, and he absolutely loves speed. <laughs> okay, but what he's doing is he's making custom parts for these Traxxas vehicles to enable them to go these great speeds, 100 plus, 120, 130, 140. You'll even see 185 on his channel. So. This guy loves to go fast and he builds custom parts, you know, and he started off just doing this for himself, but he's such a generous person that he's making them and making them available to the public. So if you want your slash to go 100 plus miles an hour, you better contact him because he makes a custom motor plate for the slash to enable you to put in high speed gearing so that you can comfortably go. 100 plus, 120, sky's the limit. Whatever you want to do, once you get one of his motor plates and motor mounts, you'll be able to put whatever gearing you want in. So go to his, to his channel if you haven't seen his channel already and contact him as soon as possible because he makes many other products for a lot of different vehicles. You can contact him. You can go to his channel, you can see what he's got going on and you can contact him yourself. But big shout out goes to him and um, He's really uh, brought the customization out of me because I could have built this vehicle the way that I wanted to, but I wouldn't have been able to put the high speed gearing that I have in there now. Okay, so once he gave me his motor mount, that's when I had to revamp my whole thought process because what I thought I was going to be doing as far as where my batteries were going to go and everything else had completely changed so I had to change everything up it took me a few days to just think about it figure out what I was gonna do and now the mock-up is completely finished I can't let you in too close because I can't give you the full details on the motor mount but I will show you everything else around it if you do want the full details on the motor mount you're gonna have to contact Jess yourself buy one and then you'll see what it's all about so let's get right into it. You're probably wondering what happened to my son's slash LCG. Well, here it is, still intact. I put the VXL system back in it, and I ended up buying a brand new LCG roller off of eBay. 
I believe it was an RC Max roller. It already had the RPM A arms and axle carriers and hubs and all that. So that saved me some money. So I went with a brand new LCG roller. The last time you saw it, it had this body. This is an absolute joke. I figured I would just take it out and destroy it the rest of the way. So I did run it with the Mama Monster system in there. And this is what's left of it. This is the quote unquote HD Chevy Silverado Proline body. HD Proline? This is a joke. I should have called you guys earlier and complained about this, but this is supposed to be a bashing body, and this is an absolute joke. It has four runs on it, and this is what's left of it. Absolute joke. I'm not happy about that at all. But the last time you saw it, it had that. Now I have the J Concept scalpel body. And like I said, everything is pretty much mocked up. I got my suspension tuned. I got it sitting pretty low. I'm happy with how everything turned out on it. It's extremely low to the ground. Okay, we got low clearance on it. And I'm happy how that all turned out. I'm running the uh, Traxxas Big Borg GTR shocks, which the roller did not come with. I took the shocks that were on this roller and I put it on my Sun Slash. And they're good bashing shocks, so that's what was good about those. They're extra stiff. So I took the GTR shocks and mod them, modded them and uh, put them on here. And I'm very happy with how everything turned out so far. I am running the J Concepts foam front bumper. I know everybody runs the Rally, the Traxxas Rally bumper, but I'm kind of happy with how this sits. I mean, it's literally pressed right up against the body here. And I love the way that it fits, and I like the way that it looks, and it looks like it has plenty of surface area. I'll be able to put some weights here on the front, because I think I am definitely going to need weights on here to keep it down just a little bit, because my batteries ended up being a little bit higher center of gravity than what I initially wanted. But I wanted people out there to look at this build and say to themselves, you know what, I can do this myself. I didn't want them to have to go out and do any crazy modifications that require machinists or anything like that so you know the only special part you're going to need is the motor mount from Jess so other than that everyone else should be able to mount these batteries up this way right on top of the nerf bars guys right on top of the nerf bars I don't know if you can see how I took a spacer right there and I mounted it spaced it out mounted it right to where one of the nerf bars bolts to front hole and the one in the back i actually drilled a pilot hole and used a spacer and put it right in there and actually spaces it out perfectly so that the straps can come through underneath so it's bolted to the chassis on one side and on the other side underneath it comes around the nerf bar and straps to it that way and these are the Techno Universal battery trays with the Techno battery straps. And like I said, you can see I still have some trimming to do. I have to trim the front of this battery tray out so that this lays flat. I want to trim these off of here because they rub on the inside of the body. So I do have some trimming to do. And you did see the radio box on the front of the chassis, which I see everybody do out there but I wanted to evenly distribute the weight of the inside the chassis here so the whole back of the chassis is empty and I was curious of how that was going to work but I wanted to move all the weight as front as possible so it turns out that the combined weight of the radio box and the servo is equal to the weight of the ESC so it worked out perfectly I just took the ESC double sided taped it right to the old battery tray and relocated the radio box and servo back to their original location. So I think it worked out pretty good the way that it is. The only thing I don't like is how high the batteries are, but as you can see, the batteries are still lower than the wheels, so that's good. And this still allows me to be able to utilize these two areas for a GPS and a weight, or a weight and a GPS, or however I'm gonna work it. Um, you can see I did do the Traxxas steel drive shafts all around, 17 millimeter hub conversion, black shock socks with the shock mod, 
Um, and that's it guys. Uh, the main focus was how I was going to situate my batteries and I think I figured it out. Once I dremel out this little bit area and this sits a little bit flat and it won't move around as much, I think we're going to be rock solid on this. Um, we'll see how this foam bumper works out on it and I'm pretty happy. Um, I plan to be, uh, like I said, stripping it down, um, trimming out all the things that need to be trimmed, especially right here because now that I am have the ESC on the other side, you can see how the wires are right underneath this techno drive shaft. So what I actually plan to do is just notch out a little notch down in the chassis there so that the wires have a channel to run through. They're not so close to that drive shaft. But they're not hitting right now, but just to be on the safe side, I'm going to cut a channel in the chassis there, run the wires. Um, I do have a 10 amp BEC, and you know I do use Dean's connectors. I just like them. They're old school, they work, they have a lot of surface area for contact, and I think they work great. Um, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, you know what I'm saying? And I'm going with a real simple setup. You know, I was curious if I even needed to run a 10 amp BEC because I am running the same setup that I ran in my e Revo. I'm using, originally I was going to use these batteries, but these are soft packs. But these are the same exact batteries I have in there, except these are hard packs. But this is what I run in my e Revo. 6000s, 23S, 6000, 11.1, 100Cs. So they're not like crazy, crazy batteries, but they're they're really powerful batteries. But I think something happens when you're going with a high-speed setup that um, there's a lot of current running through it, and you don't want to lose your steering or anything like that. So the BEC just helps to balance everything out. And uh, so I do have to uh, solder, do some solder, and put my Dean's connectors on here because I am going with these batteries. These batteries I actually use in my HPI Savage. So be able to do double duty with them and uh, throw them in here use them as a combo and that's pretty much it right now guys I do have a special paint job coming up and I do have to finish everything up on it um, can't let you see the color but going with spastics and I'm um, hoping that it turns out really good so that's my slash as of right now guys okay and now since I did take the Mamba Monster system out of my e Revo. I do have a big, big rebuild coming up on my e Revo. So, this is my Traxxas brushless e Revo, and I've done a lot of glue on this. Okay, it's all RPM'd out. This thing is a true hardcore basher. As you can see, look what I've done to my RPM A arms. I mean, I got chunks missing, guys chunks missing out of the RPM and this thing has been run consecutively over and over and over again without any rebuilding at all this thing is rock solid guys but I think it's in need for some TLC and it's the winter time so let's take the time to rebuild it you know I do have the ones for titanium rocker posts um, you see the RC solutions roll cage on it I got into G springs which I do suggest on your e Revo or your Revo these are the second from firmest and those are the firmest in the back of blue which I was thinking about doing blue all around but uh, this is what it looks like as of right now and I think it's time for a little bit of a rebuild so I have all replacement RPM I'm going to bust out my old aluminum battery covers. Um, I'm going to give it a shot, guys. These are my old steel drive shafts. I stopped using them because they kept popping out, and I did rip the rubber on here. So I did buy a rebuild kit. And let me tell you, ever since I've been using these Badland tires, it's been putting minimal stress on the drive shaft. So I'm thinking that if I continue to use these tires, I should be able to comfortably run these steel drive shafts. So I did buy a rebuild kit for the steel drive shafts. I also ordered the steel center shafts, uh, aluminum skid plate for the bottom, center skid plate, not the front and rear, just the center skid plate. And um, it should be a pretty fun project. I got a blue rit dye, and I'm gonna dye the chassis and the plastic rocker post, 
blue and this thing is going to be just an ultimate blue theme guys i am running the aluminum blue uh shock mount in the back which i highly suggest better than the plastic one we do have the aluminum preload rings on there and this is a fun truck you know it's really really cool truck um as you can see i run the uh, pro line strips slipstream body which is an excellent body that pro line makes why couldn't you make the chevy body like you make this body i don't know but if you bought this slipstream body for your e-revo you'd never have to buy another one again and this thing is pretty well banged up and scratched up and everything but i'm still going to use it despite the rebuild they actually make some uh, Lexan polishes out there in auto parts store. I think Meguiar's makes a really nice Lexan polish. And if you use it, it will take all these scratches out of there, believe it or not. But that's what's going on with my E-Revo. <laughs> Pretty funny. Here's another slash LCG. This is a buddy of mine from work. He's getting into the hobby. And he's a young kid, a really good kid. And he's very interested in the hobby. And he went out and he bought a used slash 4x4. Old, old style. Used it a bunch, cracked it up. As you can see, he is a total noob because he went out and got aluminum right away, which is a big no-no. Shock tower is okay, but he went out and got all aluminum uh, A-arms and turned out one of them is a little bent, but still gonna use those. But he was having a bit of a problem because he wanted to convert it to the LCG. And for some reason, he's, uh, his, front, his front diff housing is not fitting. So, uh, he really cracked it up big time. He had cracked the original diff housing and cracked the bulkhead and everything else. So for whatever reason, it's not meshing right. I think the internal gears are a little messed up. So he ordered a new complete diff housing online. And I'm going to help him put it back together. And we're going to get this thing out there bashing pretty soon. But he's a newbie at it. And I'm trying to help him as much as possible, you know. He's going good though. He's got the pro lines, you know. And, uh... I think once you convert it to the LCG, it's a whole new truck. So I think he's going to be pretty happy with that. Um, you know, so I've been helping him with that. You can see my uh, my Rustler Mamba Monster. That's right. All ready to go. All ready to go, except for I did end up thinking about it because it was suggested by a good friend of mine. I went with the Hot Racing Lock Diff. So. I think I'm going to be installing this on my Rustler soon, so I have an extra gear assembly that I might just throw this in and then when I have the time put it in there or I might just run the planetary gears for now and when they blow when I'm out there I can just swap this spool over, you know, but that's what I got going on on my Rustler right now. Other than that, it's ready to go. We didn't have 20 inches of snow outside, I'd be able to run it. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, that's one little project I got to do on my Rustler. Um, that's my 116 E Revo. It's pretty much stock other than as far as the electronics, but I've done a lot of work to it. It's all RPM'd out. Got the aluminum push rods. Got the steel drive shafts. Um, I do have dual steering servos on it. Um, and I did want to go fast with this vehicle. I wanted to put a castle system because I do have 6S LiPos for this, but I haven't been able to run them with the VXL system in it. Got the black springs, stiff springs in it. But I would like to get a castle system for this and finally make this thing go fast. I got the aluminum battery trays on it. Got the Proline Road Rage. But yeah, I would like to make this go fast, make it a street vehicle. It would be cool to have another speed vehicle, 116. Um, yeah, you guys are looking at the X01 with the fifth scale tires on there. Yeah, that was fun. I didn't think I would have to cut out as much of the chassis as I did. But it worked out. In case you're wondering, you have to buy the RC Hornet. 17 or 18 millimeter hub conversion off of eBay and then that will enable you to run the GRP fifth scale wheels I still have a lot of tweaking to do on this X01 I have to set up the suspension I got to get new springs um, and then other than that 
I just got to use it, you know. I don't know how well these are going to work. I find that there is a lot of slop here, guys. And I don't know if anyone out there is having the same problem as me. If you guys have shimmed them out or it's not even going to make a difference. I don't know. But it can't be any worse than it was before. Because everybody knows that driving the X01 is a nightmare. You would think it would be driving good. But it gets squirrely. It gets pretty crooked out there. So I'm anxious to see how that's going to work out. So that's what's been going on on my X01. So I do have, um, let's see here. This is my Savage Flux HP that I converted to. I converted it to the XL package. Custom painted body by me right went with the black purple orange represent HPI you see it I got the pit dog hydro radio box absolutely sick work this is way before DJ medic blew him up man I got this at a good price back in the day but pit dog is a great guy go check him out he makes awesome products and they're highly durable this hydro dip graphic that he puts a thick thick clear coat on and i've bashed the hell out of this thing and it does not chip or anything like that but yeah that's my savage flux hp that i converted to xl um you know i got the integy steering blocks axle carriers all rpm'd out um i got the tcs crawlers thick five millimeter chassis thick don't go with the hpi xl chassis get the tcs crawlers five mil um but this is another vehicle that is in desperate need of some tlc it is ready to go but i've only fixed it as i broke it and there's probably some other aspects some bearings that need to be attended to and i really want to just clean it up go over the whole vehicle i did just order the 17 millimeter hub conversion for the wheel so i'll finally be able to comfortably run 17 millimeter hubs on here without having the inside 17 mil and the outside 8 millimeter which constantly comes loose i think right now i have a red lock tight on there because those wheels are notorious for coming loose you know so i'll be able to run an 18 millimeter hub, a 17 millimeter hub conversion on there and um yeah yeah that's what's been going on with my savage haven't run that in a while um the rival you know the rival is still the rival <laughs> Haven't done much with the rival except for all those upgrades I've done. The only thing left to do is go out and drive the damn thing. So I gotta go out there and drive it. You know it does have. I know you guys know if you're if you're a fan of the show what's going on with, Saturday, uh, with the rival. But I'll show you real quick. The rival, love it. This is my favorite monster truck, and you see it. That is a custom built roll cage by a guy named Matt Wordy, and his products called Wordy Made Products. And yeah, I can't wait to drive this damn thing with the roll cage on there. Still have not driven it with this custom roll cage. And as far as I know, this is the only rival out there with this roll cage on there. So pretty happy, pretty stoked about that. I love this vehicle. I love this monster truck. I can't say enough about this damn thing. So durable, nothing breaks on it, and it's so much fun to drive. All RPM'd out A-arms, got the MGT 8.0 aluminum body shocks, extra stiff springs, um, the Asia T's aluminum shock towers, and I know that somebody was asking me recently about all these part numbers. Uh, I could do some research for you, buddy, but you know look at some of my prior upgrade videos I pretty much give you the part numbers and if you do a search on the web you should have no problem finding them alright um, so that's my rival as of right now um, but real quick on to on to Big Daddy right here this is it guys everything else I showed you I would give up for this vehicle right here the 5T the low C5 pinnacle of any RC vehicle this thing is fifth scale 45 pounds 
of pure beast. If I had to pick one vehicle, if someone said you could only have one RC in your collection, this would be it right here. This is my dream vehicle. I was fortunate enough to be able to buy one and I will never give this thing up. Unfortunately, I can't drive it as much as I'd like to because it does take a big area and it's extremely loud with the exhaust that I have on it. But this is by far my favorite RC vehicle that I have. And I think it's amazing. It's an amazing vehicle. Now this is the stock body that I stripped of all the paint. There's a technique that you can use dot three brake fluid and a scotch bright pad and you can strip Lexan paint from any Lexan body. It took me a week to strip the paint from this. To make it clear, because I didn't want to spend the money and buy a clear body, because these things are get expensive. So right off the bat, I stripped the paint, painted it candy blue, and I did all this myself. Now it is time for a new body. This body is pretty messed up. Um, I'm gonna put a link in the description box to my prior bashing videos with my 5T because this thing has seen 20 feet in the air and nothing, to this day, nothing has broke on it. You can see I landed on my roof so hard that the spark plug pushed through the body. Something pushed through the body. I don't know what that is, but that's how hard I landed on my roof. Um, you can see that, you know, there's not much holding this body together right now. It is pretty much beat up. Um, you can see my rivet fix there in the back. Worked out pretty good for a while. Um, but it's time to put a new body on here and something I've been meaning to do for a long time. Um, and this is way overdue. Um, I've had this body for a very, very long time. Hopefully you can make this out. Um, this is the Hemistorm. Hemistorm RC made by Chris DeGraff. I've had this body for over a year now probably close to two years and I still have not painted it guys it's the next level in short course bodies for the 5t this thing is insane as it sits right now it's nine panels now what's cool about it is it's a nine panel short course body but if you want to make it an open wheel class you remove the rear fenders and you remove the front fenders and then it becomes an open wheel so that's what you'd be looking at without the fenders okay it's kind of hard to make it up you know it's hard to see but if you count them all up guys there's nine panels nine panels all together and it's a lot of paint if you go to Chris the Graph, which I'm sure most of you see in this channel, H, uh, Hemistorm RC, uh, some of the stuff that that guy paints will make you look like your stuff was made in preschool. <laughs> but um, I plan on just making it one solid color, making it look really nice and vibrant, and just getting it done and on the truck. Because I've had this thing for so long, I just want to paint it and get it on the vehicle and uh, just you know do that finally but this is the stock um, body I am running the outer wears cover in here and it does velcro to the inside of the chassis but the only unfortunate thing is the hemistone body cannot run this cover so I was thinking about buying a whole other roll cage so having this body mounted on this roll cage if I wanted to use this if I was in a high sand area and if I just want to go out and run or make this a show body you know, be able to put this on another separate roll cage. But um, this is a stock body, like I said. And, um, you know, this is a 5T, man. That's what it's all about. You know? I love this vehicle. As you can see, Rep LI. That's right, Rep Long Island. I do rock steel because I do use steel lubricants for the engine. A lot of people are all fanatical about the AMS oil and whatever is popular or whatever the media or whatever the popular thing is to do. You know, sometimes I go against the grain. 
I'm actually a small engine mechanic that I am in the power equipment industry and I work on these two stroke engines every day of my life and I know what works in them and I do use steel fully synthetic two stroke oil it can be mixed 50 to 1 unlike the AMS oil I believe the AMS oil has to be mixed at 100 to 1 if not more ratio which you will get a lot of dripping from the exhaust a lot of sludge the steel oil is 100% biodegradable which means that if it does drip on the grass or anywhere it is okay it's safe for the environment that doesn't mean much but that just shows you the difference in the technologies of what's going on here um, but I believe that the HP Ultra steel two cycle oil that I use is extremely good in lubricating air cooled two stroke engines. So let me just show you real quick in case most of you haven't seen the underneath of a 5T. Okay, see how it, the outerwear is right in the roll cage. But yeah, this is uh, my 5T. A lot of work has gone into this. Um, a lot of money as well. Um, this is the stock engine that has been modified by me. Um, it does have an ESP big bore kit, which means simply the stock engine is a 26cc engine. When you put a big bore kit on there, it increases the size of the piston and in turn increases the size of the opening of the cylinder. So it is the stock crank case, but the cylinder part has a bigger piston and a bigger cylinder hole, cylinder size. So now it is bumped up to a 28.5 cc. You guys are hearing the OBRs and the 30cc reed engines and all that. Those things are animals, those things are beasts, and everybody wants more and more and more and more horsepower. And I can agree to that to some extent, but I think a good all around, you know, CC for this for this vehicle is, is 28.5 cc. You're not gonna go wrong with the 30 cc, but I wanted to build an engine myself, you know, I wanted to see how much longevity I could get out of the stock engine, and right now, it's the original crankcase, um, it's a, they call it a race ported cylinder, which means they just pour out some material on the intake and the exhaust to allow for a better airflow and higher performance, um, so it is the stock 26cc with a 28.5 big bore conversion on it. Um, I do have the Dark Soul clutch housing with the Elcon adjustable clutch on the inside. It's impossible to explain it unless you know what I'm talking about, but it does have an upgraded clutch system on the inside. Um, this right here is just a chrome case for the motor. That's just a little bit of bling. Um, I do have the Turtle Racing HD pull start on here which is a steel braided rope for it. I have the Bartolone Racing exhaust pipe. This exhaust pipe is $250 just on its own. So let me just tell you, give you an example of the amount of money um, that takes to go into these fifth scale vehicles. Um, you know, I have the aluminum chassis braces front and rear. I believe those are fast lane chassis braces. Um, I have the DDM front chassis brace um, unfortunately it doesn't match the fast lane all too well but I think it still looks good um, I like the honeycomb on the fast lane and they are guaranteed for life and for the price when you compare them to the price of some other chassis braces out there the, you can't beat it and these things have held up phenomenally um, this is something that I did on my own um, I created my own um, CVD sway bar protectors and they bolt right to the um, the A arms there and it protects my CVDs in the back and my sway bar because there is a lot of kickback of dirt and I did buy the full force ones and they're an absolute joke they're almost as much of a joke as that slash Silverado body over there um, as soon as dirt hit them they cracked up so this is actually made out of a guard on a power boom 
which is just a motorized broom that somebody brought into my shop and I had to replace the guard on it and I figured hey if that thing is meant to protect it from that it should work pretty good on 5T and it's held up excellent on here and it on both sides you can kind of see an example of it over there um but yeah all stock electronics still everybody's blowing out their servos and upgrading for faster servos and I'm still using my stock ones and I got a lot of runs on this I did get the, the servo braces and that will help strengthen these servos because it'll keep them from flexing so I did put the servo braces on here um, servo braces on here I have the aluminum servo saver which I believe this is plastic but I did get the lossy one um, I have the Bartolone disc brakes on here, and I have a lot of work. I got the Silverback inner and outer bead locks, inner and outer. I got the Silverback hub nuts, um, and I got a lot of stuff on here. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I don't want to make this video too long, guys, but uh, that's my plan to finally spray this new body that I've had for a few years now. Sorry Chris if you're watching. I wish I had as much time on my hands as you do buddy. You do some phenomenal work. But I plan to uh, spray it and put it on there and show it off pretty soon my friend. So um, for now guys, I know if you sat through this, you're a true RC fan and uh, I really appreciate it guys. I didn't want to ramble on and make this video too long, but I appreciate you guys watching and uh, thanks for always supporting my channel. Um, if you really like my channel and you want to help me out, give this video a thumbs up. It helps spread the word, guys. And uh, for now, this is Chris the Everyday RC Guy saying thanks for watching.